That's Trim. Marine Rescue Sydney. Marine Rescue Sydney. Over. Marine Rescue Sydney. Marine Rescue Sydney. This is Trim. Over. Could you please go this to is for real, by the way. This is not. Uh, this is not fake news. This is for real. Spoken to the water police, and they're just confirming that they'll be able to assist you. There's no ETA on that. Can I just please double check your long and the lat? Over. Hi, it's Paul from Staying in Cape Louise. It's about 7.30 in the morning and I'm down at Brooklyn. I came down here early because last time I came here it was absolutely chockers. But we have had a lot of rain and there is a lot of debris in the water as you can see. It's still a bit misty so I'm going to wait till it clears a bit, have a bit of breakfast. And then meet up with Josh and his new navigator called Trim. He's putting in at Akuna Bay. Dave is also putting his heron in here at Brooklyn and that's called Blodwin. And Len's putting Lisa Jane, his Hartley 14, in at Batonga. And we'll all meet up at Refuge Bay tonight. Someone just told me there's a boat around the corner that's sunk. I was down here a few years ago when there were massive storms and there were three boats washed up on this foreshore. fog has lifted so um, hopefully I can see anything in the water because it is a bit of a concern. It's sunny. We haven't had sun for, for weeks. I think I told you before there was a flood a few years ago and I was out here kayaking and there was a whole string of pumpkins just floating along the tidal stream. Incredible. And all the uh, debris that comes from the Hawkesbury River has to come through here, because uh, the Hawkesbury is back up that way. And they've had severe flooding about three weeks ago, and then the last couple of days they've had more flooding. And it all has to come through here. So the water is extremely brown. There's not much I can do about that. So I've turned the motor off and we're sailing. Probably is only one knot or a bit more, but we are moving, which is good. But uh, it's quite warm when the sun breaks through the clouds. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's nobody around because the water is pretty brown. But it's a Sunday. Normally, this would be packed in summer. So I've got it all to myself at the moment, which is great. There's always a lot of swell through here. It's probably four knots now, maybe. Maybe five. That first beach you can see on the left, that's Pearl Beach. And then to the right is your minor. So it's about uh, 12.30. Nice bit of breeze. 
a lion island behind us in the sun. No sign of that rain that was due at 1.30 or 1 o'clock. So dead ahead is the jetty of the cafe where they film for overseas viewers home and away. Australian soap opera that's probably gone for about 30 years. Quite big in England. On the other side of those trees is the big beach and that's where they uh, film all the beach scenes for home and away. But you can walk up to the top of Baron Jerry Lighthouse which is up there. It's quite a steep track but uh, a lot of people do it. Walk along the beach, you can see them walking along the beach and then up there. And next to the cafe is the course Palm Beach Golf Course. Nice little nine hole golf course. My cousin used to be a greenkeeper there years ago and I think it was George W. Bush came to Australia and he came and played golf there. And he played with his own monogrammed, presidential monogrammed golf clubs and he left a nine iron in the bunker. So of course my cousin and his fellow uh, ground staff uh, put the golf club in the shed and thought they'd uh, scored a trophy. But the next day the CIA man came and wanted the golf club back, so they had to give it back. There you go. Palm Beach Golf Course. True story. Just uh, standing up because there's a little bit of debris around here. It's just a bit easier to see if you're standing up. Yeah, so that was uh, Banner and Joey and uh, the back of Palm Beach. There's a lot more boats out here now because they suddenly realised the weather's nice. It's a nice gentle breeze, constant. Running quite nicely down here. Probably doing, I don't know, four knots maybe, maybe five. Blob in, blob in, blob win. Uh, Kate Louise, Kate Louise, can you read me over? No, I just had a spot of lunch and I, I'm just about to start rigging, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at least half an hour more away. Lisa Jane, Lisa Jane, Lisa Jane, Kate Louise, nice to hear you. We've decided to relocate over to Fisherman's Beach opposite. Over. <laughs> Affirmative, relocate to Fisherman's Beach opposite. Copy that. Just heard from Lisa Jane and Len, so he's here as well. Um, he's America's Bay, so I've just managed to tell him to relocate opposite to Fisherman's Beach. Um, VHF reception's not very good. Mind you, there is a big hill between me and him. It's about three o'clock. Wind is beginning to drop, which is not good. Well, good morning. It's very foggy. It's beautiful. Had a really good time last night. Unfortunately, I left the camera on the boat, so I couldn't film any of it. This is Fisherman's Beach, and it's, uh, it's not that big, but it was great.
someone's wakeboarding didn't go that well. Just tell us about the Navigator. Uh, so, just bought the Navigator about two weeks ago. Uh, drove up to Queensland and, uh, and back, so a thousand kilometre trip to, to buy a boat. And uh, got it home and then started to look at, you know, what it needed. Um, and the transom needed some work, so there was rod along, not rot along the bottom, but the potential for it. There were some holes and what have you. So I've had to epoxy that just quickly for this trip. Is it five star? Dinghy cruising compared to the Heron? Yeah, look, the Heron was was comfortable in its sleep setup and it stored all the gear rather nicely. Uh, however, you, you you were cramped all of the time. You just did everything from one position. And 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 in terms of sailing it, you were you were always cramped in it. Um, so being able to just spread out, lie back, it's got comfortable sort of seat backs to it. Um, and they're pretty fast, aren't they? I believe so. They're just an all-round nice boat on the water, you know, even if it comes to the chop, it just bashes through it. You can, you can walk from side to side or go fore and aft, and it, it just stays really stable. I really like it. I haven't seen many in Australia, to be honest. They're very popular in Europe. Uh, well, certainly they don't come, come up for sale very often. No. Um, I haven't seen one on the water either. Generally, you'd see them in your rig, though. I think you've done very well there. So, we're going to have a vegetarian egg and bacon roll. The sun's breaking through the fog. It's going to be a nice day, I think. Bit of a smiley face. So there you go, vegetarian egg and bacon roll, but I forgot the sauce. Well, it's about 9.30 and we are off sailing. Uh, the wind has filled in a bit, it's probably only two, maybe three knots, but it's enough. We're planning to get up to Patonga, maybe go around Line Island, depending on what the wind's like when we get up there. Winds are meant to be a bit stronger today than they were yesterday. And it's meant to be suddenly coming later on this afternoon or this evening. But uh, I think we should all get a nice sail in. Wind. I'm just trying to stay in it. So the wind has died on us. As you can hear, I'm motoring. So uh, we're going to Patonga Beach and then I think we're going to the pub for a quick beer because the wind's meant to be coming uh, about two o'clock. It's probably about one o'clock now, but um, so we'll stop here for lunch, have a beer hopefully, and uh, then see if the wind's enough to get us out right around Lion Island and then go back and find somewhere else to stay tonight. A bit disappointing because we were going quite nicely and then the wind just dropped completely. So there you go. Well, that was a very nice lunch stop at the pub at Patonga. The southerly change was meant to be coming through by now, so there's meant to be a bit more wind than this. 
but um, it's not that strong. So Thanks just... for the beer, Paul. <laughs> no worries. Um, so we're just going out to uh, have a bit of a look at Lion Island and then we'll head back probably to Hallett's Beach tonight, I think, which is back down opposite where we were last night. So uh, still a beautiful day though, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. See, Len is way up there. So fast. So there just wasn't enough wind to get out to Lion Island today, so um, we're turning, running for home. This suddenly just hasn't appeared. There's going to be a gentle run if it stays in this direction all the way back. It's going to breeze now. is hit now and it's ferocious. <laughs> yeah, Dave's dropping his mane. Good idea. Well they said it was coming, it was just uh, about an hour late. Everyone's setting up for the night. So Len, what have you got for dinner? Well, beautiful tortellini. Uh, I'd like to say I made it myself, but Mr. Hines did. And then you've got to supplement it with peas. Does peas make a meal? <laughs> <laughs> peas maketh the man. <laughs> So Len, how is it? Yeah, I'll have this one again. Very good. Hmm. Thanks, Continental. Uh, Heinz. Oh, bugger. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning. It's a very nice night. The wind wasn't too bad last night. The tide is in now. Uh, it's pretty early in the morning, I think, but uh, no fault this morning. Uh, yeah, very nice here. Nice and relaxing. Just having my coffee and then I'll have some breakfast. Breakfast. Egg and bacon sandwich. Yum. So Len's heading back. He's got to get the tide right to cross the bar of the Tonga. OK, Josh, so you had a problem with the outboard yesterday. What, what was the problem with the outboard? Well, the motor runs fine. Uh, it just won't transfer power to the prop. So it'll go in and out of gear. It sounds like the gear at the, at the bottom end is just, it's just not hot, holding. So yeah. it won't push. Um, fortunately, the wind came up and uh, blew us in the general direction of Hallett's Beach this morning. and. Uh, I was rescued by Blodwin over there. Yeah. And the final approach uh, when the wind died. The final approach. The final approach. So that got us into into. Well, I was. He caught me trying to paddle with this ridiculous thing, <laughs> and I just looked like a lunatic. So he saved me and brought me in here. And now, uh, now you've requested assistance from Marine Rescue. This is a first for the Sydney Raid Group. Yes, I am the embarrassing first person. It requires rescuing. <laughs> Uh, just with the wind on the nose coming down that valley uh, and 
Yeah, you've and got no to motor. I won't be able to get back into Akuna Bay by myself. Yeah, so the Akuna Bay, for those that don't know, it's about six kilometres from one end to the other, and it's quite narrow, so it's too far to paddle with just a plastic paddle. Mm. So marine rescue are coming out, hopefully. Yes, uh, they either them or the water police. It could get even more exciting. So it's just whoever's available. <laughs> Next available rescuer will be sent out. Anyway, we have called marine rescue to tow me back. That's Trim. Marine rescue Sydney. Marine rescue Sydney. Over. Marine rescue Sydney. Marine rescue Sydney. This is Trim. Over. Please go to one nine and call back. Over. Going one nine. Marine Rescue Sydney, Marine Rescue Sydney, this is Trim. Trim, this is Marine Rescue Sydney. I uh, just wanted to let you know we've spoken to the water police and they're just confirming that they'll be able to assist you. There's no ETA on that. Can I just please double check your long and lat? Over. Just one moment. This is for real, by the way. This is not. Uh, this is not fake news. This is for real. So they want my latitude and longitude. So Navionics app. Uh, that's how I'm doing that because there's no um, internet coverage here. So I, think I'm I can just pin myself that. and and. Yeah, it's about 35 bucks, but it's well, it's coming into its own right now. But yeah. The maps work offline because it's working straight off the satellite. Trim, test your latitude, 33 degrees, 36 minutes, decimal zero, over. Bit of excitement, hey, eh, for Sydney Road. So, uh, egg and bacon for breakfast, Dave? Yeah, um, yep. Standard raid food. So Josh is uh, waiting for the tow. Could be hours, could be minutes. Probably more like hours. Me on a radio channel, you can talk to. No, that's fine, mate. Oh, right. It's all good. Yeah, you're on 16 anyway, are you? Yeah, you're 16. Yep. <laughs> I'm leaving now. Okay. Well, it's good. They came, what, within 20 minutes? That's pretty fast, I suppose. Yeah, no, that's super, super quick today. All right, see you, gentlemen. See, see you, later. Josh. So there we go, the Marine Police turned up. It was probably only about 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, took Josh's details, it was all got very serious. Uh, and now they're towing him back all the way to Akuna Bay. So yeah, a good outcome. So we're heading back again to Brooklyn. Dave and I have got to go to Brooklyn. Uh, Len's going up to Patonga. And Josh, of course, is going back to Akuna Bay. Uh, it's been quite an eventful morning with the marine rescue and everything. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's all been fun. It's a good little bruise out here, it's probably five knots. I'm running pretty much all the way back and reaching all the way back. So thank you for watching Sailing Kate Louise. And if you've got a boat and want to share in some adventures, go to Raid Sydney on Facebook or RaidSydney.com. See you next time, somewhere on the water.